Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, so, excuse my pile of laundry that I need to fold. <laughs> um, but this video has been something that has been in the works for a few months now. Um, yeah, I am not the most vulnerable person. Um, and by that, I mean that even though there are things that I don't mind sharing about myself, um, and I'm, I think, pretty open with sharing those things, there are other things that I am not at all comfortable with sharing. Um, and it's not because it's even necessarily that big of a deal as much as it is just, um, I think that there are things that if people were to like ridicule me or, you know, be critical of me for sharing it, I really couldn't care less. Um, and so those are the things that I'm comfortable sharing because like if someone doesn't like it or whatever else, like it's not gonna bother me or hurt my feelings or keep me from doing, you know, what I've already been doing. But there are other things that I am more sensitive about and you know, this probably isn't common knowledge, but I'm actually a very sensitive person. Um, I'm very sensitive in terms of the things that I'm sensitive about. So let's, you know, be clear. Um, but the things that I'm sensitive about, I am very sensitive about. Um, and I have just experienced, I've had experiences where I have been vulnerable and shared about myself. Um, not even necessarily on like a large, like public scale, but just you know, on an individual interpersonal level. And, you know, the response was enough to be like, yeah, okay, don't want to feel bad anymore. Um, so yeah, I am not really comfortable doing that as a result, but I am trying to challenge myself and break out of my comfort zone. Um, and just kind of come to terms with the fact that I have had a lot of experiences that I think people can relate to. Um, and because I'm doing live streams on my channel every week talking about, you know, like the heavy, hard hitting topics and, you know, the stuff that I don't mind sharing my opinions on um, or being, you know, vulnerable, vulnerable about, um, I think I just feel like it could be and hopefully will be beneficial for me to use my channel to make videos about the things that I have experienced that other people can relate to and that could potentially be helpful to someone else who is going through a similar situation. Um, so yeah, this is the first video hopefully of many where I open up a little bit more about me and what makes me tick. Uh, so yeah, if you wanna know more, keep watching. So this video is about my mental health journey. Um, I have been on an intentional journey with mental health for several years now um i want to say I f the first time i went to see a therapist was in early 2015 um so it's been about six years off and on um you know just addressing my own mental health and trying to figure certain things about myself out um and so this year in particular i had just kind of had some new perspectives presented to me um, about things that I had felt I had been struggling with, um, but, you know, just wasn't necessarily sure if that's what was really going on and didn't want to, you know, like self-diagnose or whatever else. And I wasn't really sure how even to get the process started um, for getting help. Um, so yeah, that was really the catalyst, having this information brought to my attention, talking to a few people, um, about, you know, their journeys with different things, um, and then figuring it out from there. So 
I did document some of the journey. Um, and so I'm just gonna cut to those clips right now. So the last couple of days I've been doing just like some research and stuff. Um, most people probably don't know, but in 2000, I wanna say late 2015. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, Lord. Oh, my allergies. Sorry. Anyway, so late 2015, um, I got evaluated for adult ADHD. Um, and the psychiatrist basically said that I exhibited some symptoms, um, but that in certain areas I tested as like gifted and he didn't think that I had ADHD. He thought that I just had a problem focusing on things that I wasn't interested in or super passionate about. And the reason why I decided to get evaluated was because I was in law school at the time and I was having just like an abnormal amount of trouble focusing. Um, anyone who was in school with me could tell you that I spent a lot of my time in class um, either arguing with people on Facebook about religion or politics or whatever else, or I um, was watching gymnastics videos on YouTube on mute. So um, I, it, I just didn't have an easy time paying attention in class. Um, studying was extremely difficult. Um, I... Yeah, it was, it was just really, really hard. And no amount of like forcing my, trying to force myself to sit down and do it. I just couldn't. Um, and so I did, you know, the best that I could. And I, you know, obviously still passed my classes and graduated and stuff like that. I made it work. But I think the other side of that was that I knew that on good days, or on a good day, when I was able to kind of like force myself to really like apply myself. Um, it didn't happen often, but when I was able to, I knew that I had the potential not just to do well, but to be at the top of my class. Um, Cause you know, I, there were a few assignments, a few tests where, you know, for one reason or another, be it because I was afraid um, or it was like a writing assignment, assignment, or I was like afraid of failure or it was like a writing assignment or something like that. For whatever reason, you know, it was something that I felt like I could apply myself to. Um, and in those instances, I always did extremely well. Um, if not, in the instances I'm thinking of, I'm pretty sure every single time I got the top score in my class. Um, and I'm not saying that to brag, I'm saying that to say that I was capable of high achievement. Um, and I knew that I was capable of high achievement, but I also knew that it required me to really put in the work. And I wanted to put in the work but for one reason or another, I just wasn't able to do it. Um, and so when I got evaluated, I was told that it was just because I just wasn't passionate enough about it. And instead of beating myself up for not being able to put in as much effort as my peers were able to put in, I should just be happy with the fact that I was able to be successful despite the fact that I wasn't um, super passionate about it, wasn't able to apply myself or put in as much effort as the next person. Um, and so that's kind of how I looked at it. Um, but I, you know, continue to go on and just have issues focusing. Um, I still to this day have issues focusing. Um, and there's, it's so funny because there's things that like Jack has complained about, like um, me, you know, just not being able to do stuff that I'm not super interested in. Like, okay, I know that you don't like to do this, but like, go do it. And it's like, eh. Maybe it, get done, it gets done, maybe not. Um, I shake my legs a lot, like I'm always moving. Um, and so I will literally like sit here, I don't know if you can see, and like go like that all the time. And I'll shake the bed or like the couch, whatever we're sitting on, and he's like, oh my God, if you don't cut it out. Um, and my mom, I talked to her today actually, and she said that that's something that I've done all the time since I was a little kid. I always am moving something. I can't just like sit completely still. Um, um, and I thought it was mom brain, 
but as I've gotten older, I've become super forgetful. Um, I have to write appointments and all that stuff down because I will absolutely forget. Walk into a room, forget what I came there for, put stuff away, not remember where I put certain things. Um, and so there's, and I mean, there's a whole other list of symptoms, but a lot of, there's a lot of things that are on that checklist that, a lot of boxes on that checklist and I check off those boxes. I check off a lot of those boxes. Um, and so I just kind of revisited it um, because I saw online recently that one, women get misdiagnosed a lot because, um, you know, we're not as likely to have problems in school the way that boys do. Um, that was one, I think one reason why my psychiatrist or the guy who gave me the, um, the evaluation was kind of like, mm, I don't know, because I wasn't diagnosed as a child as having ADHD. Um, but like I was high functioning and so my parents didn't necessarily you know, think to get me tested. Like I was busy, hyper, um, but I, oh, I was obedient. I would, you know, I did well in school. Um, but even that, like my teacher would tell my parents, like she doesn't apply herself. Like I knew for me, the thought process was what's the least amount of work that I can do and still accomplish my goals. And so that's how I think about it. it was, I mean, that was high school and undergrad for me um it was just i don't like school and so i'm gonna you know obviously i want to do well because i need to do well um but i'm not gonna you know if i don't have to like bend over backwards to get this done then i'm not bending over backwards um and the other side of that is that I've really struggled in educational environments like a law school, for example, where, you know, you only have one test at the end of the semester and you either know the information at the end or you don't. Um, or work environments where, you know, there may be kind of like these generalized goals that you're trying to reach, but you're given a lot of autonomy um, in terms of like how to reach those goals. Just like being a self-starter, um, not having a ton of structure um it makes it difficult one it causes me anxiety and two it makes it extremely difficult for me um to kind of navigate because if i don't know like what my bottom line is and i have to just throw myself into something and invest in it and i'm not super i don't necessarily love it enjoy it i'm not super passionate about it it's extremely difficult for me to do that um and so yeah had all these issues um, and I've just been managing um, and I found out that not only do girls get underdiagnosed because it's usually looked at as like a behavioral thing as opposed to a, um, as opposed to like considering other factors and I did not have behavioral problems in school. Um, but it's also something that goes underdiagnosed in people who are high functioning because um, the consideration is or the thought process is if you have these issues then you wouldn't be performing as well as you do as opposed to thinking about it as um you could be performing better and you're performing well in spite of these hindrances um rather than having the help and support whatever else that you need to be able to um to to live up to your full potential i guess um and so I have felt, you know, something was off for some years now, um, but I got evaluated, the guy said I didn't have it, and so I kind of just, you know, took that for what it was. Um, but I have decided to go and try someone else. My primary care physician is a black woman. The person who initially evaluated me was not. Um, and so I'm going to go and talk to her. Hopefully, um, it goes better, but if she's kind of on the same boat as that guy, then I'm gonna have to try something else. But um, yeah, I genuinely do think that I have ADHD. And I don't even necessarily think it's like adult onset or something like that. I think I probably have always had it and just never got diagnosed because I'm high functioning. Um, and again, that is not to like toot my own horn or anything like that. Um, but it is to say that 
I've come a long way or accomplished a lot, not necessarily being um, the best version of myself. And if it's at all possible to function, particularly mentally, at a higher level, um, like that's something I absolutely would like to be able to do. Um, and if it helps with, you know, any other side effects like anxiety, depression, sleeplessness, because I do struggle with um, being able to sleep at night and sleep through the night. Um, and that's something else that I've dealt with for years. Um, so, yeah, if it can help with all of that stuff um, and make it easier, I think, just for me to be, like, more present, um, then, yeah, I'm all for it. So, I'm documenting it and um we will see what happens so it has taken some time but i am about to have a my first appointment with a psychiatrist to see about getting an adhd diagnosis um i'm extremely nervous um just because like I went to my PCP to get a referral to have this appointment um, and she kind of didn't really believe me. Um, and I don't think she was trying to be malicious, but she was pretty dismissive. Um, and so I'm just hoping that um, this doctor gets it. And if nothing else, doesn't just like write off my symptoms um, and this isn't dismissive. <laughs> uh, so yeah, fingers crossed. So that actually did not go terrible, I am happy to say. Um, I have a depression diagnosis, um, which is a start. Uh, the doctor said that before they get into ADHD evaluation, they wanna treat any overarching symptoms that may um be going on i guess or any overarching um mental health issues that may be going on um to see if any of those adhd symptoms are still there um once the depression is treated so i'm going to start some meds soon meds to boost the dopamine levels in my brain and um to help me sleep and so i'm hoping that between the two, I will feel better. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy that I at least feel like I'm making progress. Um, I definitely feel like I need to find an actual therapist now because the psychiatrist is not that. Um, and so yeah, I'm, I feel better. My anxiety was not necessary <laughs> because it, like if nothing else, it's not all in my head. Um, there's definitely something that's not right. Um, and so now we can go about the process of getting it treated um, and figuring out what works. Um, I'm actually happy that she's hesitant to like go straight to ADHD medication just because um, I've heard it's like not great for you long term um and so i'm not so much pressed about getting a certain type of medication as much as i am pressed about feeling better and then if it is a further issue beyond just the dopamine in my brain um i still don't know if i want like meds for it if there's like behavioral there cognitive therapy or behavioral therapy something that can help I probably would want to try that route anyway. So, um, yeah, all in all, I am happy with where we're at. So now you know I have been diagnosed with major depressive disorder. Um, and the medication that I take, it's called Wellbutrin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, that medication is an antidepressant that also, it raises dopamine levels in your brain. Um, and that also helps ADHD symptoms. And so right now, um, I am on a 150 milligram dose. We started out at 100 milligrams. Now I'm up to 150 because my 
depression symptoms have gotten better in terms of like just like not feeling motivated not getting enough sleep um between that and the trazodone that i take to help me sleep those symptoms are not as bad um but my concentration or like my ability to focus and my memory are still not as good as they should be um and so we're just trying to you know see how it goes get the dosages right um but i'm happy with the progress that we have made so far so something i just want to say um you know to anyone who may be dealing with similar issues um my mom said something to me just the other day that um i thought was just kind of helpful to think about um and she was basically saying that you know medication can help but it is not a fix-all um and she's not the first person to say that to me um thankfully along my mental health journey I, the professionals that i have had um i have never you know gotten messaging from them that medication was a fix-all um and it was always kind of like you know let's start you off low work our way up you know that kind of thing um and you know there's always emphasis put on you know having other things that i'm doing um that contribute to having a health having healthy mental health um and you know doing the things that were within my power to do to make sure that i'm in a good place so um specifically right now um making sure that i exercise is really big because exercise is like a natural dopamine booster um being intentional about just eating getting enough sleep um that is one thing that i have noticed if i don't get enough sleep it doesn't matter you know whether or not i'm taking wellbutrin because it doesn't you know like i still have a lack of motivation whatever else so sleep is like imperative going to bed early um asking jack to help out if i need a little bit extra sleep because i feel blah or sluggish or whatever else um so just being really intentional about protecting that eating drinking enough water exercising um practicing mindfulness um you know having devotion and mind you like i don't do any of this stuff perfectly um getting into a routine has been really difficult and so that's something that i am working to you know be able to help things run more smoothly not just for me but for everybody in my home um so yeah all of that stuff is all of those all of that stuff are things that need to be done um along with you know taking medication and you know there are holistic treatments um maybe you don't need medication or don't want to go the medication route that's perfectly okay um but it just means being intentional about doing what you can do to um help yourself along um and and not beating yourself up if you don't do it perfectly because you know i definitely don't and you know i have to be kind to myself on the days when i still feel like Ugh, i just i don't want to get out of bed i feel crappy i can't focus whatever else so being kind to myself but then also being intentional about doing what i can do on a day-to-day -day basis um even if it's not a lot you know still doing what i can do to help myself in this journey moving forward and the other thing i will say is just that you know this is not you know the easiest thing to undertake or to um you know get started and so don't feel bad if you know you're like i don't feel like everything is okay but you know it just feels overwhelming to try to go about the process of figuring all this stuff out um for me, it was, you know, kind of, I didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, I had to see my primary care physician. And when I did, um, I was able to find out how to go about finding a psychiatrist and then, you know, speaking to my psychiatrist um, to be able to make the appointment. She definitely told me, um, or... 
I found someone who had, you know, decent reviews online um, and who also was accepting new patients, um, who was, you know, close enough for me to be able to, you know, get to her if I need to, but who also was okay with doing video conference. Um, so that is great because my psychiatrist is in Long Beach and I live in North Hollywood. So that's kind of a drive. Um, so it's great that I don't have to go into the office. Um, and yeah, like, you know, in hindsight, it wasn't, you know, that bad of a process, but, um, I didn't necessarily know how to do it. Um, and so don't be afraid to ask for help if you don't know how, um, but then also don't, you know, break it down into little bite-sized pieces. Don't uh, feel like it's this overwhelming, terrible thing. It's it's really not that bad. Um, and I definitely feel better for having gone through the process than I did before. Um, and lastly, I will say, don't let people who are not you and who don't understand what you're going through make you feel like your estimation of yourself and where you're at is invalid. I cannot tell you how many people have said to me like, oh, I don't think that that's, I, I don't think that you have anything wrong with you or like, oh, I think you're okay. Or like you did X, Y, and Z, you've accomplished so much. How can you possibly have da 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 da? Or like, what could you possibly have to be depressed about da da da? Like, you know, I, listen, I've been told I needed to pray about it. I, you know, the whole gambit. Um, and so don't let people who are not you make you feel like, you know, you're imagining it or making it all up in your head or you're crazy for thinking that something is wrong with you. If you feel like something is not right um, and you talk to people who are have experienced that or who are going through it um, and, you know, they are able to tell you, like, this is what happened to me, this is how it feels, and there's similarities there. If you do an online assessment, there's all kinds of online assessments for different types of mental health, you know, whatever. Um, and so you can take those assessments to get an idea of whether or not, if nothing else, you just need to see someone um, so that you can have someone who is trained and licensed for this kind of stuff to be able to help you navigate it um, and figure out what the best course of action will be for you and your specific needs. Um, you know, whatever it is that you need to do for yourself, like, don't let anybody talk you out of it because nobody else is walking your shoes. Nobody else is living your life. Um, and nobody else can feel, you know, how you're feeling. Like the only person who is in your body existing in this space is you. Um, and so you, you know, you have to trust yourself, trust your gut, um, and believe that how you feel is valid. Um, and that, you know, taking care of yourself holistically, not just, you know, your body or, you know, your heart, but understanding that your mental health is super important as well. Um, and just not letting anybody make you feel bad about doing what you need to do to be okay. Um, I don't, I have not had anyone who has been in therapy tell me that I, you know, am wrong for feeling like I need it. I have not had anyone who has dealt with clinical depression or who has, you know, dealt with ADHD or other types of neurodivergence. I haven't had any of those people tell me that it's all in my head and I'm crazy. Um, if anything, they're like, yeah, like I totally relate and understand where you're coming from and all of it makes sense. And, you know, here are some, here's some advice. Here's some stuff that you can do um, to help make things a little bit easier for yourself. Um, and so, yeah, being intentional about talking to the right people, not letting yourself be swayed by the wrong people, um, and, you know, doing what you feel you need to do for you to be okay and be the best version of yourself. Um, and, you know, for anyone who's out there, if you don't have anybody to talk to, if you, you know, are struggling or you're, you know, feeling bad or whatever else, like, I am, you know, 100% open to being there, listening, um, you know, giving whatever, I don't want to call it advice, but giving whatever help I can provide in the context of, like, steps that can be taken to get professional help, um, 
or just like encouraging encouragement love support whatever like i'm more than happy to you know give that to the best of my ability because i know it's hard um and it can be scary and lonely and feeling misunderstood sucks um so yeah to the extent that i can help or be there i would absolutely be more than happy to do that um but even if i am not that person for you um you know seek out the people that you have in your life your family your friends um who are willing to to be there for you that you can lean on um because it's hard to do it by yourself um and so just having people in your corner who love you and support you and you know are willing to learn and grow with you as you evolve in your understanding of yourself um and you know, I would encourage everyone, mental health, whether you whether or not you have mental health issues, um, to be intentional about introspection and, you know, just doing what you can to understand understand yourself better. Um, because you never know what damage you could be doing to the people around you if you are not being intentional about you. So, yeah, that's my spiel. Um hope it was helpful if you have any experiences to share um any questions you want to ask or you know any comments about this video let me know in the box below and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and i will see y'all next time bye